So, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about logarithmic functions. There's a couple things that we need to uh, we need to go through as far as you know being able to determine the logarithmic um, function of that. And if you guys remember, when we're talking about an exponential, our exponential functions we know looked something like this where we had y equals, and I'm just going to call this with b to the x. All right, you can use your base as anything, right? I think maybe last class period we talked about some of them with a. <laughs> you be the x, but then the main important thing was at this point you had 0 comma 1. It always crossed at 0 comma 1. Right? That's what we talked about last class period. And then what we discussed is to be able to graph this, what you can use is you apply your transformations that shifting left and right and A and B and up and down. And a lot of times, uh, Gears up, if you can put, please put that away. So a lot of times what we had is for our transformations, we said Y equals A times B raised to the X um, minus H plus K. All right, I'm just using some different variables. All right, but you guys should just be familiar with the different variables and the transformations. All right, and remember that your H told you to shift left and right and the K told you to shift up and down. Right? Yes. So it's just maybe a little bit different form that you guys worked with last classroom. But you guys should just understand the general, right, Well, You should just understand the general transformations that's going on with that. All right? When you have an addition subtraction inside the function, that's going to shift it left or right. When you are um, applying a constant outside the function, that's going to shift the graph up or down. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to talk about is now logarithmic. All right? And when dealing with logarithmic, we're going to show, we're going to see more of this algebraically. But logarithmic graphs are actually going to be what we call the inverse of an exponential. And if you guys remember when we talked about in Algebra 2, we talked about how to find the inverse. To determine the inverse graphically, we're going to reflect over what we call the x equals y line. All right. So if you can take a graph, remember how you have reflect over the y-axis, you flip it over the y-axis. Reflect over the x-axis, you flip the graph over the x-axis. So reflecting over the y equals x-axis, you just flip it over the y equals x-axis. And we're graphing a logarithmic graph, you guys are going to see now it's going to look something like that. All right, so that's a logarithmic graph. The important point on a logarithmic graph is now it doesn't have a y-intercept, or at least the parent graph doesn't have a y-intercept, but it does have an x-intercept. And it also has now an asymptote. The asymptote is now when x equals 0. right? Because remember over here, the asymptote was y equals 0. And we'll talk more about that in a second. And now we need to talk about the domain in the range. All right? and, we'll, and this will probably make a little bit more sense once we get to the algebra part. But if you guys look at the domain for an exponential, you guys can see that the domain goes infinite, infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. And remember, domain was what numbers you could plug in for x, right? You can plug in any number in for x, right? And you can always get a value out because x was your exponent. So your domain, we said, was from negative infinity to infinity. But our range, we saw that, well, if whatever number you put in for x, it didn't matter if it was a fraction, doesn't matter if it's a negative number or a positive number, any number raised to another number is always going to be positive, right? Any, whole, any positive number raised to any power, doesn't matter if it's positive, negative, or a fraction, it's always still going to be a negative number. Because remember, b had to be greater than 0 in our definition. b is greater than 0. right? So if you take any positive number and raise it to a power, it's always going to be positive. So therefore, our range was from 0 to infinity. All right. So without really discussing what exactly a logarithm is algebraically, we can just look at this graph and determine, well, the domain here is saying it doesn't look like if I have an asymptote at 0, that means it's going to approach 0. It's never going to get across to negative numbers. So now my domain is from 0 to infinity. but as you guys look at the range, you can see that this goes down to negative infinity, and then it keeps on going all the way up, and there's not going to be a constraint. 
I know it's very slowly increasing, but it is going to keep on increasing. So the range is from negative infinity to infinity. All right, so that's going to be your start. Oh, what does the logarithmic graph even look like? y equals log base b of x. OK? And that is going to be your general um, definition of your logarithmic graph.